Mr. President, many of our good colleagues uh, like to suggest our nation has historic deficits because the American people are not taxed enough. Some even claim the so-called Bush tax cuts are the culprit. But the numbers tell a different story. In fact, these tax cuts were fully implemented in 2003. Annual revenues have increased steadily from $1.782 trillion to $2.524 trillion in 2008. They increased every year as an increase of more than 40%, and that's double the rate of inflation after the tax cuts took effect. In fact, since 2008, the recession and the weakest economic recovery in modern history, it's true that revenue has now declined. That makes sense. With high unemployment, there are fewer taxpayers, and naturally, revenue declines. Going forward, however, the Congressional Budget Office projects revenue as a share of the GDP, the economy, will rise to the 18.4 percentage point of GDP by 2021. And that's assuming the extension, not the elimination of the 2001-2003 tax reductions. Revenue is therefore projected to return to its historical 18.4% average. It would seem then that the American people are already taxed enough to finance a government whose spending uh, has grown wildly out of control. The real problem is that while revenue will return to its historic average, if nothing is done to slow spending, annual outlays will increase from $3.7 trillion today to $5.7 trillion by 2021, an increase of more than 50%. As a share of GDP outlays will remain, spending will remain on average above 23% of GDP. That's nearly three percentage points above the historical average. We have this debt because government is spending too much. This is not a matter of personal preference. This is an indisputable and empirically verifiable fact. The systemic problem that this country faces is too much spending, not too little tax revenue. Now, I understand that our friends on the other side of the aisle are in a tough spot. They know this, but their left-wing base refuses any changes to the spending programs driving these deficits and debt. Friends on the other side of the aisle are almost exclusively focusing on hitting up the taxpayer for more revenue. Well, that's right. They're talking about revenue, but the tax increases that they're recommending are more distracting <coughs> than illuminating. I think it is fair to say that all of the talk by the president and his congressional allies about corporate jets and yachts is a classic red herring. On this chart, and just the name of this fallacy comes from the sport of fox hunting in which a dried smoked herring, which is red in color, is dragged across the trail of the fox to show the hounds off the scent. Thus, a red herring argument is one which distracts the audience from the issue in question, though the, uh, through the introduction of some irrelevancy. And in my view, all of these tax issues that President Obama and those on the other side of the aisle are discussing are red herrings, meant to distract Americans from the real driver of our deficits <coughs> and debt, and the real choices that Democrats have, uh, have to but are refusing to make. Let me walk through some examples. If we were to raise the depreciable life on corporate jets from five years to seven years, as the Democrats propose, it would yield $3.1 billion over 10 years. How many days of debt reduction uh, over that 10-year period <coughs> would a $3 billion savings or increase in taxes uh, amount to, Senator Hatch? Well, you know, to hear the President talk, you would think that this is the key. <clears throat> to balancing our budget. We all know that he's overstating the case, but it would provide at least a month of debt reduction. I think that's about all it would, would do. Now, given its essential role in his deficit reduction proposals, you would hope so, but I'm sorry to disappoint my friend from Alabama. According to our calculations, that amount equates to only 24 hours and 23 minutes of the debt over the next 10 years. So unfortunately, that doesn't even, sol that doesn't even, be even begin to solve the problem. And uh, of course, as you can see here, uh, $13 trillion, the Obama debt, uh, uh, there'd be $3,100,000 uh, $3, over time for corporate jet taxes, and the remaining Obama debt, assuming that they didn't spend more, which is an assumption you can't make, would be 
$100 million remaining Obama debt. Is the problem solved? Of course not. Well, uh, let me just say I appreciate the work of the ranking uh, member of the Finance Committee and longtime member of that committee. So it seems to me pretty clearly that under the President's budget that he submitted earlier this year, which I have to say was voted down 97 to nothing in the United States Senate, his budget would have increased the deficit over 10 years by 13,000 billion, and he suggested that his plan to reduce, uh, increase taxes on corporate jets by 3 billion would somehow make a difference in that. And I think, Senator Hatch, you're right uh, that that's not accurate. Um, how about other proposals we hear from the Democrats, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Senator Hatch, cutting back mortgage interest deduction for yachts as used for second homes? Well, in other words, uh, by our calculations, the savings from this proposal would be even more meager. If Congress enacted this change, we could cover the debt from the Obama bu budget for all of 15 hours and 47 minutes. Again, this does not solve the problem, problems of the burdensome debt the President is piling on. Well, it is shocking to see how small those numbers are, and we aren't really hearing that in the press and the national discussions. For the talk we've heard about these proposals, you'd think they'd yield more than two days of debt uh, reduction over 10 years. Well, you would think so. But the other 3,651 days of debt under the 10-year Obama budget would not even be touched. There's a third red herring that has been thrown out there. Maybe that one closes the gap. We've all heard the President talk about hitting American oil companies by reducing or eliminating domestic energy incentives. Now, this is a real priority of his and of congressional Democrats. We had a cloture vote on a bill by our friend from New Jersey to extract $21 billion in revenue from U.S. oil companies. The Finance Committee had a hearing where the other side touted the benefits of this tax increase by grilling the CEOs of the top five oil companies. If you listen to my friends on the other side, one would think that an additional $21 billion would solve all our fiscal problems. Their rhetoric suggests that this is the only thing standing between more money to send kids to college and provide school lunches. But I wonder if my friend from Alabama might put into perspective how much of the 10 years of debt in the President's budget this proposal would cover. Well, with 13 billion, or 13 trillion, that's 13,000 billion, uh, 21 billion won't amount to much. Well, here's how many days of the 10-year debt of the Obama uh, budget would be covered. But people should at least know the facts about this proposal before deciding. And as a deficit reduction proposal, this is very weak tea. This is a much ballyhooed proposal, and it would cover the deficit for uh, actuality five days, 18 hours, and 47 minutes. If you listen to our friends on the other side of the aisle, it would appear that all fiscal problems could be resolved by taxing millionaires. Uh, is that something you're familiar with, that argument? Well, I sure am. Anybody, anyone, anybody watching C-SPAN will see our friends on the other side making the argument day in and day out. When I hear this argument, I often think of a saying from a distinguished former chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, Senator Russell Long. When talking about tax reform, Senator Long said, some might reduce the politics to this. Don't tax you. Don't tax me. Tax that fellow behind the tree. <laughs> <laughs> and since there are a lot more folks who aren't millionaires than are, the Democrats have calculated that the politics of class warfare works. Let's be clear about something. Higher taxes on these wealthy individuals will not only have adverse economic consequences, it will not even provide the deficit and debt reduction suggested by the left. Even if all the income, every dime that they earn of those earning more than $1 million were confiscated with a 100% rate, with the unlikely assumption of no taxpayer behavioral response, for the year of conf confiscation, these higher taxes would yield about $893 billion. Now that would be a one-time confiscation. Surely none of these folks would continue to work, save, or invest in the future if the government were going to confiscate all their income. They'd have to cover all of their other expenses, including state and local taxes, from savings. And after taking everything from the folks behind the tree, in this case, the folks earning more than $1 million, 
How many days of the 10-year Obama budget debt would be eliminated? Not many, the answer to that. But as often as the president talks about taxing the rich or spreading the wealth around as a cure for our fiscal problems, you would think it would bounce a budget. But would it get us there? Well, I say to my friend from Alabama, confiscating all the income from those earning over $1 million does not even fix one year of the 10 years of projected Obama debt. Our friends on the other side, using White House talking points sophisticatedly prepared, appear to have resorted to red herrings with their deficit reduction proposals. They want the American people to think that a few easy tax increases on the rich or yacht owners or corporate jet users or oil companies, the people behind the tree, uh, can solve our debt crisis without spending reforms. They hope that these red herrings will hide a serious democratic vulnerability if they are not going to address spending in a serious way. Massive tax increases on the middle class will be a necessity. These red herrings are designed to throw those citizens who care deeply about reducing the $13 trillion debt uh, that President's budget will incur off the trail. The trail of deficit reduction leads to one of two places, restraining out-of-control spending or crushing tax relief uh, increases on middle-class families. Restraining spending is not a red herring. It cuts to the heart of our fiscal problems. It goes to the root of the problem. The president and his allies need to come clean with the American people. The president so far has refused to present a deficit reduction plan. 